Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. We're back to the Chris Foss Acro Watt today. It now has a nice fiberglass cowl. I figured the plastic one the kit came with might get a bit melty with the hot running four stroke. And it looks a bit nicer too. I also cut a couple of holes and ran a loop of the fuel tube outside the cowl. I can now pop a peg on it when the engine's not running so the carb doesn't slowly fill with fuel. Of course the tube's on the other side of the model so you can't actually see it. <laughs> the engine's so much easier to start now it's not flooded. The main issue at the moment is the idle. The low speed needle is quite a bit off. The engine doesn't want to idle consistently below about 3000 RPM which on this model is enough to have it taxi around. Not brilliant. The manual suggests a stable idle after about an hour of running, which it's well over now. Forum thread suggests it's more like a gallon of fuel, which we're well short of. Either way, I'm not too concerned yet, as it's a ringed engine, they always take a long time to settle in. For now, careful management of idle to keep the engine from stalling is quite, well, manageable. It makes enough noise you can hear it struggle quite clearly. Now, before we do the first flight, I have a little admission. What you're about to see isn't actually the first flight. I did that a couple of days ago. The camera was pointed at the model for the whole flight, but it wasn't recording. Whoops. <laughs> Professional camera work here. Yep. <laughs> the first flight was only a few minutes though. I like to check the model over after to see if anything has managed to shake loose, especially with a large four stroke. The vibrations can be rather immense. Right, here we go then. The engine's popping a little bit, but that's the rich low end. I think it sounds rather good. Well, it's up. The takeoff run didn't break half throttle, by the way. Still lots of oomph in reserve. Excuse the spots on the lens, I meant to give it a clean but completely forgot. <laughs> when the camera is zoomed in you can't see them though, so it could be worse. I'll leave you with some circuits, no fancy flying, still getting a feel for the model, and right now we just need more time on that engine. I think we'll have a look at the telemetry after, look at the nice graphs and all that good stuff. <laughs> And I'm back in the room. <laughs> Despite being quite a bit overweight, it comes in on approach extremely smoothly, just letting it descend at low throttle. Better than some 40 size trainers I've come across. Okay, while I get it ready for another go, let's have a look at that telemetry. The Spectrum DX8, and I should imagine the DX9 and 18 probably do something similar, allow you to store a telemetry log on the SD card. You need a TM1000 or TM1100 as well as the usual Spectrum receiver. A bit bulky, but the system does work rather well. I'm using some Windows software to view the file. I'll pop a link to the thread with a download link in the description. This is three short flights worth of data. The high points are where it was idling on the ground. It's a bit tricky to make sense of it, but if I go to the custom view and only enable temperature and airspeed, it's fairly clear what's happening. When flying the engine is a fairly consistent 60 to 70 degrees C. The lower engine loading and good airflow keep it at a nice temperature. Once on the ground though it really peaks. But it does show how useful telemetry can be. Just measuring the engine temp on the ground only shows part of the story. Measuring 88 degrees on the ground might make you think the engine could be overheating, when in reality it's quite acceptable in the air. Of course it depends where the sensor is placed. With an uncowled engine, the airflow can seriously affect the reading. This Falcon 56 log, which is an open cowl engine, shows that nicely. It starts at ambient when priming the engine, some fuel got on the sensor cooling it down a bit. Then it warms up again. And when it fires up, the temperature shoots up to 41 degrees. Now we get to the flight. As soon as the takeoff run starts, the temperature drops right down. 
stays fairly consistent until running out of fuel where it warms up again. But then, monitoring the temp on an open engine is a bit pointless anyway. With all that airflow, it's all but impossible to overheat. Far more useful when the engine's nice and closed in. One thing before we get back to the flying. The speed telemetry on the AcroWatt says we peaked at about 60 miles an hour. Considering I never went over half throttle, and that would have been level flight, the speed at full throttle should be quite, uh, well, interesting. <laughs> Ready? Yep. We're still just flying circuits, but that RCV91 does sound quite good, I think. It's popping quite well now. Probably unburnt fuel in the hot exhaust with the rich low end. Probably need to work on that a bit next time. But that'll do for now, so thanks for watching. Like if you liked, and if you haven't, do please subscribe. Bye guys. <laughs>